Hello, this is Darkwolf 80s, and in this video tutorial I am going to show you how to install GIMP and how to configure your Wacom tablet to work with GIMP, and how to install your favorite GIMP theme. The software and installation files can be found in the description box of this video. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because there are no videos that talks about w the Wacom configuration or how to configure your Wacom for GIMP, and if there is, nobody's talking instead they play music in the background of the video and leave texts all over the all over the place which basically throws the whole educational purpose of the video out the window a rule of thumb if you want to do a video tutorial you would have to show and tell uh, the other reason is that I like to personally I like to experiment with other softwares and after trying out GIMP I found it to be an interesting piece of software, especially with the new uh, two, version 2.8. A little info about uh, GIMP. GIMP is an open source software, which is this guy right here, this, this, that's GIMP. And from the icon, that's Wilbur, that's uh, GIMP's mascot. He's uh, a rat slash pig, coyote. Nobody really knows who uh, what it is, but it's cute. Uh, GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, uh, which, from the name implies, uh, you uh, it's an image manipulation, kind of like uh, the uh, commercial software that we use on a daily basis, such as Adobe Photoshop. Uh, why? Do we? Uh, why GIMP? The reason is, uh, by all means, it's not a replacement for to Photoshop, but the possibility for it is there because professional work can be done with open source softwares, and GIMP happens to be one of them. Especially with the current 2.8 version, the software has taken a lot of shape and functionality that delivers the exact result and qualities you would get from commercial software such as Adobe Photoshop. You be the judge. Uh, before I continue, I just want to point out that this tutorial is mainly for Windows uh, users. However, the configuration should not be that different from Linux or Mac OS X. Uh, before we start, I would like to go. I've already set up the web pages that uh, on where you should all be going. So please follow this tutorial step by step. The first thing I want you to do is to go to gimp.org, and once you're there, click the download button and download GIMP 2.8, depending also on your operating system, whether it's Lin Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X. Once you have downloaded the Windows installation file, the next thing that you want to download is the help file. After that, go ahead and type in, in Google and you would go ahead and type in GIMP extension pack for Windows. And you should be able to find that from the source forge. Download that extension because the, the GIMP extension basically completes uh, GIMP. What, after that, and this is optional, you can go ahead and download the GIMP themes, which is provided by uh, Billy Keller, uh, Billy Kerr, uh, and on his YouTube channel via Dropbox. And just in case if the Dropbox link does not work, you can go ahead and drop a, uh, leave a, a comment on this video, and I'll be updating the video. This video's description box with a uh, future link to get the game themes and I'll be uploading it to a public hosting site. Anyhow, once you have all these uh, four files, go ahead and follow the installation uh, in the, this way. Let's go ahead and close this browser. The first thing that you want to go ahead and install is GIMP 2.8 setup. Once you have installed that, 
go ahead and install the help file. After installing the help file, the next thing that you want to install is the GIMP extensions. After, during, the installing, during the installation of the GIMP extensions, uh, make sure that you have the GAP, which is the GNU application package or animation package, uh, un uh, unchecked. Because if you checked it and install everything along that comes with this package, the GIMP is going to crash. So make sure that you have the GAP unchecked. Once you have the uh, GIMP ex uh, installation g extension installed, uh, the next thing that you want to make sure is you have your Wacom driver installed on your computer. Now, now for me, in my case, I am using the Intios 3 6x8 uh, Wacom tablet. Uh, make sure that you get the updated version depending on your Wacom tablet. Once you have installed the drivers, go ahead and click Start, Control Panel, Hardware and Sounds. Over here we're going to go ahead and configure our Wacom tablet. Click on it. Now, before uh, I recorded this video, I've already configured my GIMP with uh, the Wacom tablet, but you can go ahead and follow along with me. What you want to do is you click on Functions first, and then once you click Functions, over here, click the plus sign. In the plus sign, click Browse, and Locate GIMP. If you're using Windows uh, 7, 64, you should be able to find it in the program files, GIMP2, bin, and there we go. Click open, and then hit OK. But I've already done that. Do the exact same thing for the pen. Once you've completed that, you should be able to see GIMP writing alongside with the pen, and once you click on the functions, you should be able to see GIMP as well. And once you switch between the two, GIMP stays put together. Once you have done this step, go ahead and launch GIMP. Now, a word of warning, GIMP shouldn't take long to launch, but if it does, leave it be. The next time you start at GIMP, it should be able to load faster. Now this also could uh, depend on your system configuration, your PC, in addition if you had or added a lot of fonts on your uh, computer, which basically takes more of the load time. Now that we have we are in the GIMP user interface, uh, the new thing, uh, we're going to switch to the new UI that 2.8 provides us. So first things first, as we click on the windows, and we go to single window mode. Once we are here, the next thing that we're going to do is configure the themes. To configure the themes, I just want to point out that to install it, let's go ahead and do that right now. Go open up the folder, open up your themes, select all the themes, and drag and drop to the following area. Click Start, My Computer, Local C, Users, your username, and GIMP. There should be a folder called Themes, and if, you, if there is no folder called Themes, go ahead and create one, and then drag and drop the themes over here. Close all the following windows, and go back to GIMP. From here you could just hit Edit, Preferences, Themes, and then we can go ahead and select our theme. Personally for me I like to keep, uh, to go for the Arrow Ion. Let's see what, the, what happens. We hit OK. 
and then from there we get, we quit and then launch GIP again. Right off the bat you see that we have a black uh, status bar and GIMP should be launching very quickly. And there we go. We have our nice, awesome black theme. Now, we're going to be go ahead configure our Wacom to be recognized with GIMP. To do that, we click on Edit, Input Devices. Once we are here, right off the bat, if and this is also uh, when you have your Wacom drivers installed, you should be able to see the Wacom tablet eraser and Wacom tablet pressure stylus. Now, for Windows, which by default is set on disable, just set it to screen mode and do the exact same thing for the Wacom tablet pressure and set it to screen mode. Now if you're having to use the other operating systems such as Linux or Mac OS X, after doing some uh, reading I've noticed that a lot of people have recommended this is for Linux users and that is to set it from not on a uh, screen but to set it on window. For Mac OS X I have no idea what are the settings so it's a trial and error for you guys and you should be able to go ahead and uh, give it a shot. It's either between screen or window. Now, now once you have set it to screen hit save. Close the window go to file, let's create a new file and then let's test our pen. As you can see we've already seen results. There we go. There we go, I had to target it. Now, we've already configured our pen pressure. However, there is a small glitch in the program. The reason is, the, is that because the Wacom tablet is not exactly made for uh, GIMP, uh, it's more of le more or less made for the uh, commercial softwares. However, GIMP has been in development in making the tablet uh, to work properly, but the glitches are still there. And one of the glitches is, if you were to hold your st pen stylus and flip it to the eraser, you will go ahead and see it's not erasing but painting with the paintbrush or the airbrush. Now the, the glitch is simple and to fix that issue you basically make sure that you are on your eraser mode on your pen and simply click on the eraser and then erase. Now go ahead and flip it back to the pen and you would automatically see you're back to the drawing with the pen brush. Flip it again and you're back to eraser. Just like how you would normally be doing in Photoshop. Now that we have configured that, the other thing that we're going to be configuring is the pressure of our pen. To do that we click on Edit, Input Devices, and we're going to click on pressure. For the eraser, for me personally, I like to set it just that, that much. And I would go ahead and do the exact same thing for my stylus and do set that much. And we can see the difference. Now it's much more, a little bit dense and I can have much more control. And the exact same thing goes with the eraser. Great. Now that we have configured our pen pressure with the pressure that we desire, the next thing that we're going to configure is the buttons of our Wacom tablet. Now, a warning is that the pen uh, buttons the buttons within the, the stylus 
the uh, front and back button. Uh, personally, I've tried uh, editing it, but for some reason, the software would not go ahead and recognize it with it. However, the buttons on my Wacom tablet are able to be recognized with GIMP. But in all honesty, I like uh, I have no problem with it. I mean, the first button that I click gives me the pop-up menu, and if I was to go ahead and click the other one and hold and drag, it's basically giving me the pan ability, which is fine. But I would per personally prefer, rather than having the pop-up menu on this side, uh, with this button, I would prefer to have the picker, but that uh, GIMP wouldn't let me. So, uh, if you are a GIMP developer and if you're watching this video, please go ahead and find a solution to, uh, or provide me a solution to in fixing this uh, issue. Moving on, the regarding the button layout on the Wacom tablet, I already like the. Uh, there are some buttons that I already like uh, as they are by default, but there are some that I would personally prefer changing it. For starters, the uh, and by the way, keep in mind that I am using the uh, Wacom NTS uh, uh, 3 6 by 8 6 by 8 so yours uh, could be different. But no, no, nonetheless, let's uh, the bigger button over here, which is that. If I was to go ahead and click it, by default, it's already giving me the picker. Which is a neat, which is pretty neat. So I don't have to touch or modify that key. The, however, what I'm going to modify are these two other keys. And for me personally, I like to keep those two keys. One is undo, the other is redo. And for this is to uh, go ahead and be my color switcher. So let's go ahead and do that. To, to do that, we click on keystroke, and as we, as we can see on uh, the GIMP, for the undo paint, it's control Z, and to, for redo, it's control Y. So I'm going to go ahead and type in control Z, and that would be my undo. I'm going to hit OK. The other one would be keystroke, and let's just ch double check it, redo, which is control Y. That's my redo. Hit OK. And that would be plain X, and that would be my color switch. So if I was to go back to GIMP, remember the bigger button gives us our picker. So now I'm going to go ahead and select that, and let's try the other ones. And we are undoing our paintbrush, and the other one redos. And lastly, we have our color switcher. This is really neat, but obviously, as you can see, what's happening right now is it glitched on me because uh, the reason is if you do any changes over here, you need to go ahead and close GIMP and start all over again. Basically, I mean, not all over again, but uh, relaunch the software. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're painting and I'm switching. Let's go ahead and pick a proper color. There we go. There we go. Much better.
and obviously if we were to switch back to the eraser we're still in eraser mode now the other buttons what I like to go ahead and do is give one a uh, duplicate layer and a new layer Let's go, or you can go ahead and configure uh, whichever it is that you want on the other side uh, but again that's your own personal preferences but if you but, but for me like I said I like to have a new layer a duplicate layer uh, one is for curves and one is for values I mean sorry, for levels However, I want to touch up on something more important on these uh, aside from these buttons, and that is the touch sensor strip. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on the touch strip. Now, obviously, I like to keep my, uh, for me personally, that is, the left hand side of my touch strip to be the enlargement increment of my brush size. And on my right hand side, I like to keep the zooming in and zooming out. So let's go ahead and configure those right now. We go ahead and click keystroke. And for the incre uh, increment of brush size, is the right bracket key, left bracket key, and then we go ahead and type in brush increase and decrease hit OK and then we, as we can see our brush is getting huge but of course again it glitched up because whatever we do over here and we go back to GIMP it will glitch up oh it didn't there we go oh well but preferably exit the application and relaunch it that way you'll be you'll be 100 percent sure that there are absolutely no glitches are uh, happening in between your work. Now, let's go ahead and configure the other side and set that to keystrokes and that would be for the zooming in, zooming out. I want to make, uh, however, I wanted to point out an important note that uh, for zooming in and zooming out the key, uh, key uh, shortcuts for the desktop is the plus and minus and the exact same thing for the laptops. However, uh, if, you, if I was going to press, press the plus sign on my keyboard, which is right here, it will not give me the plus sign, but it will give me the equal. To avoid that, I simply click the plus sign on the number keypad which is be, should be on the right hand side of the keyboard so let's hit that that's the number sign the plus sign and then we hit the minus and that would be zoom in and zoom out however for laptop users uh, you're not going to find the plus sign on uh, the right hand side unless you have an expanded keyboard on your laptop. So the other option would be to change it uh, in your in the GIMP uh, keyboard setup, which you can find right here. You go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, type in Zoom, and then scroll to zoom in click on one of the uh, click on here and type in control plus once you type uh, the new uh, input for your keyboard go ahead and do the exact same thing over here and then but make sure you hit the save and then close and then and then you input your uh, configuration onto the Wacom because that's the only way you'll be able to get that zoom in whereas the minus you simply have to hit the minus on your keyboard that's it for so I'm gonna go ahead and close that 
and then we're going to hit OK, and let's, and let's go ahead and test this out. And, we, and as you can see, we are zooming in and zooming out. And that's it. That's all there is to it. But of course, I haven't configured the, the, my right-hand side of my tablet, but I can go ahead and do that uh, any other time, or I might change my mind and set up differently. But again, it's personal preference. However, let's just make sure that everything is working properly and let's close GIMP and relaunch it one more time. Let's go ahead and hit control new, enter, and test out our pen. It's perfect. Smooth as butter. Testing out the brink increase of the brush size. Oh, that is just beautiful. Then we can go ahead and decrease it. Switch our colors. Picker. Undo, redo, yep. And of course, we can go ahead and pan with the button of our stylus, open up the pop up menu. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. You have successfully configured your Wacom tablet with GIMP. One important note that I forgot to mention is that you need to enable the graphics accelerator. And within GIMP just in case things don't glitch up. So to do that, hit the edit, go to preference, and then go to input controllers. I already have mine set up, but to do yours you simply click on DirectX input, hit that button, and then a pop-up window will come up. Simply hit close. And that's it. You should be able to see DirectX, uh, Direct Input, your main mouse wheel, and your main keyboard. Hit OK. And that's it. Just to let you guys know uh, what it is that I do. I'm a graphic designer and a freelance art artist. Um, if you are interested, you can go ahead and find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, Tumblr, and Weasel, and my nickname is DarkWolf80s. Links will be in, in the description box of this video. If you like this video and that you have learned something new, do share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, as I am planning on doing more video tutorials with either GIMP, Photoshop, and other digital painting apps on other devices such as the iPad Sketch Club app and the Nintendo 3DS 3D app including speed painting videos. Now this all depends on the comments and feedbacks that I receive. So do leave a comment. I am interested in knowing what you have to say. This is Dark Wolf 80s signing off. Cheers.